Welcome to another edition of the Tiger Football Report. I'm your host, Spiro Marikas, along with the head coach of the Tigers, Pete Shinnick. And coach, the Tigers go down to Norfolk and get the victory over a, a very pesky Spartan team, 28-23. Um, this was a game where you guys looked like you were going to be in control early on, but Norfolk State made some adjustments and they, and they really hung around. Yeah, credit them, and uh, we knew that was the type of game you know that we were going to get from them, uh, and really had opportunities, as you say, to kind of you know take that next step and and get to that next place. But they kept finding ways, and um, you know, a very very good running team. Anytime you face a running team, I mean, they're they're one play away from busting one, and we saw them do that. You know, for a touchdown that got them back in the game. Um, and then they were playing a new quarterback that we really didn't have a lot of film on to really know what his strengths and weaknesses were. And so they stayed in the pocket a little more with him than they did the other guy. So making a couple of adjustments there. But And they know, tried some trickery, too. Yeah, very. I thought they used him really well with that, the reverse pass, uh, to throw a nice dig route, you know. Um, and so credit them. I mean, they, they came up with a lot of different ways to attack us, uh, but really excited that our guys were, you know, we really answered every call uh, that they made. And so I think, you know, at halftime had the feeling of, okay, you know, we're in this, but really – we could, we could take another step. We could do something. Um, and then, you know, we found a way in the end to really uh, get done what we'd hoped to get done. Sean Brown showed flashes of brilliance on Saturday and then uh, some interceptions, which we had not seen. He had only thrown one coming into this game. He throws three on Saturday. What happened on those plays? Yeah, I think, um, uh, I think the last one was a bad throw um, because we got a guy wide open. Um, I think the one right before half was a poor judgment uh, on his part. Uh, and then the other one, I think, you know, a little combination of a couple things. Um, but you're right. He had been very, very good. Uh, he had been decisive. Uh, and, you know, he's got to play that way. And I think uh, we saw that on a lot of uh, his throws. Uh, and that's, you know, uh, you know, every now and then you're going to run into a game like that where there's some in-between balls and stuff like that. But uh, I think all of those he'd love to have back, all of those he can fix, uh, especially the last one. I mean, the last one really, I think, you know, puts the game away. We're going to go up 35-16. Uh, We've got J.C. on uh, running right down the seam, and he, or J.D., excuse me, running right down the seam, and he just underthrows it. And linebacker made a nice play, uh, but wouldn't have been a play at all if he put about two more feet of air on that ball and uh, threw it right where uh, J.D. could have run to it. So uh, still like his decision-making process. I think if you look at it, uh, he's putting the ball where he needs to put it. Uh, so I think really good things are in his future. And then we continue to see Tyrell Green just pounding over people, and, and <laughs> he is really a force. Well, I, I went to him after the game. I said, hey, man, you're the closer now, all right? So uh, you've figured out that role. You've put yourself in that spot. Yeah, really fun to see. You know, I think two weeks in a row against two very good defenses to see our offense get the ball with two minutes to go, have to get two first downs uh, because the other team has, has the timeouts. We have to get, um, uh, we have to get first downs to, to win the game. And to do it two games in a row, running the ball uh, when everybody knows that's what you got to do. Uh, very impressed with uh, what we were able to do there at the end. All right, well, that concludes your non-conference portion of the schedule. So it's all CAA play from here on out. Saturday, homecoming against Stony Brook a team that comes in with a record of 4-2, and two. Uh, a new coach, and kind of a similarity between he and you in that you both were college football players and both of your fathers were coaches. Coach Billy Kosh, his father was a defensive coordinator at Delaware for a while, and of course your father, not only a great NFL player, but also a longtime coach. Yeah, and Billy, I mean, another connection with Coach uh, Kosh, uh, uh, Billy was actually Brian Shepard's uh, wide receiver coach at VMI, and then when Brian left uh, to go to Minnesota, Billy became the offensive coordinator at VMI. So uh, I've really followed his trajectory because Tyson Walkenheim, who's our tight end coach, Scott Walkenheim was the head coach at VMI, so uh, I've known Scott since I was a GA at Arkansas. So 
uh, small world when it comes to coaching, but followed really Billy's career. I mean, he's done a great job. Um, uh, know, they I, totally turned it around. I yeah, mean, I mean, they, they were, were they, at the bottom last yeah, year and now four did not, and two. Did not win a game to come in and uh, you know win four games uh, already. I think is a great testimony to uh, type of coach he is. I mean, what they're building. You watch their guys. Uh, they play with great energy, great excitement. Um, you know, they are they are doing a great job on both sides of the ball. I think they manage the clock very well. I think they're holding the clock, holding the ball longer than anybody else in the conference. They're running the ball well. Uh, defensively, they're flying around and, and make you really earn everything that you get. And, you know, they're up on uh, Villanova uh, early in the game. I mean, really up until, I think, going into the third quarter, halftime, somewhere around there. Uh, so they've proven they can play with people. I think they're, you know, they're the most improved team in the CAA uh, with how they're doing it. And we're, we're going to have to be uh, on point with what we're doing. Uh, Roland Dempster, the running back, 700 yards already in six games. What is it that he brings to the table? Yeah, he brings uh, a great force when he runs. He runs uh, very low, uses his pads well. Uh, he is a thick body. Um, you're going to need to be very sure in tackling him. You're going to need to uh, you know, grab hold on, let some of your friends come uh, and help you get him down. Uh, and their own line does a really nice job of just keying their blocks uh, staying on them long enough to then, you know, arm tackles aren't going to get him down. And, um, you know, I think, he's, I think he's touched the ball more than anybody else in the conference, but he's also got more yards uh, than anybody else in the conference too. But he, he's a load. He's tough to bring down. Uh, and they run the inside zone, outside zone, as well as anybody we've seen. All right, well, the Tigers and the Seawolves will do battle Saturday, 1 o'clock at Johnny United Stadium. It's homecoming. We hope you all will come on out. So for the head coach of the Tigers, Pete Shinnick, I'm Spiro Marikas. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of the Tiger Football Report.